So today we're talking about Calva, which if you're a horror fan, you'll know it. I mean, so many critics have put it up there in their list of, you know, very influential films, obviously for a lot of filmmakers as well. It's considered a key part of the new French extremity movement in horror. And it's been released to digital platforms on the 19th of September. And look, boys on film have seen it. Chris is here. I'm Phil. Thank you very much for joining us on this review. So it's directed by Fabrice Duvelts, who's a Belgian uh, filmmaker. And the cinematography has been done by the guy who worked with Gaspar Noé on Irreversible. Have you seen Irreversible? I don't remember seeing Irreversible if I have seen it. It's one of those films that a lot of people say is one of the most shocking films that they've seen. It includes a sexual assault, but it's filmed in such a way that it's not, you know, it's very uncompromising. It's it, it, it no holds bars. It just goes in there as obviously an assault is like that. So it's very brutal. And the filmmaker does not shy away from that. Gaspar Noé, you know, renowned as being someone who just puts that kind of stuff on film and a lot of people don't like that a lot of people will walk out of a screening or they'll say mm-hmm. that it's not the sort of thing they'll want to watch but this is i would say it's not as hard hitting as that although there are definitely hard hitting scenes in this we'll go into detail a bit later but yeah what did you make of it calvair uh, otherwise known as the ordeal it's that's what it means isn't it the ordeal it's certainly an ordeal it comes up doesn't it, at the beginning and says calvair yeah. ordeal and you're like oh, yeah. okay now i know what i'm gonna get and yeah, it's bleak, you know, it's it's kind of unrelenting and it's bleak and it's it's quite brutal in places. But it's a well made film, you know, that the, the narrative, the story all hangs together really well. I actually really like uh, it's, it's it it must be shot on some old stock or something. It's got the, I know it was only made in like two thousand four or something, yeah. but it looks like it could have been like the seventies or eighties or something. Yeah, so I know what you mean. Rainy, sort of slightly old you know the film's been left lost in the attic for 20 years kind of feel to it which kind of adds to it actually because it just it makes it feel a bit more domestic and it makes it feel a bit more sort of horrific and a bit more sort of period in this kind of weird way so it kind of takes you back to a place as with every good horror and you and i say this almost every time there are times where you're just yelling don't go in there i don't do that (laughs) well come on to that because that that obviously is something that i started yelling at the screen you know quite early on but it's about um a traveling singer isn't it mark stevens who is um in Belgium, r- rural Belgium. He's looking for somebody to stay because his van breaks down. And it's that kind of cliche thing with horrors where your car breaks down or your van breaks down, you're stuck in this place, you know, in the middle of nowhere, this rural, this desolate rural place. And yes, to that extent, it's cliched. I wouldn't say the film overall is cliched though, because I think no, it does do it. stuff that other filmmakers wouldn't necessarily do. But yeah, he's taken in by a character called Bartel, who's an innkeeper. And straight away, like you say, I was yelling at the screen, you know, this is not somewhere you need to be. I know yeah. you're desperate because your fans broke Leave. down, but he's very weird. <laughs> this innkeeper is strange. There's no one there. No one was staying there. He's the only person that was staying there. So yeah, there were a lot of, a lot of alarm bells ringing right from the start. Yeah, definitely. And it kind of doesn't let up, does it, the weirdness? Because, like, there's this kind of delusional sort of, you know, you start to think, okay, like, why are these people saying those things and doing those things? And it's obviously a kind of delusion thing. And then more and more people are saying the same kind of things. And you're like, (laughs) okay, this is messed up. All these people are saying this kind of same stuff. Apart from Mark Stevens, the singer, of course, who's, like, just passive, you know, passively because he's tied up and all that kind of stuff has just got to accept all these things but you realize that, you know, a bit like uh, deliverance that it's like this small community who've i don't know maybe they're all inbred or something i don't know but it's like the small rural community where they're all just quite messed up and yeah. it's a really weird place for him to have arrived and for bartell to be living i mean we've got to talk about the barroom scene the barroom scene uh- you know. <laughs> that was your, fa- your favourite scene. I thought that was hilarious as well, because I will say, I will stress, there's not a lot of comedy in this, but the comedy, when it does appear, is is very dark. I mean, it's black comedy, isn't it? Bartel is always, you know, warning Mark not to go into the village, because Bartel's yeah. inn is near the village where all these people are. And he does. He goes down there and he sees some very messed up things. I mean, that's another thing we were going to talk about, because you said to me... I don't like films that involve animal cruelty and there is animal yeah. cruelty in this. I don't know if they were allowed to actually genuinely shoot real animals because at one point there seems to be a pig that is a real pig, but is was it animatronics? I don't know. I don't know. And look, to be honest, I just get 
you know, I'm becoming an old man now and I get a bit squeamish about animals being hurt and stuff in a way it. that I didn't use yeah. to. And, you know, just the suggestion of it's enough for me yeah, personally. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was enough for me to go, okay, I know what they're telling me is happening here. I don't think it was because it wasn't really happening and I don't think it was even involved with real animal, but it was close enough. It was cleverly done because it, it, it made me think that this stuff was happening. And it, that, was, that was difficult. But as you say, you know, this... The reason it was kind of important to the story is because this community is so messed up, you know, and it, to underline how messed up they are, they have to do these, you know, the, the cinema, the filmmaker will have had to show us these taboo things that they do. And, and that was that was difficult to watch. But, you know, you realize that is part of this network of behavior that these people have. That, that the only light relief being this ridiculous piano player and the ridiculous song that he plays and the stupendous dance that these people do <laughs> in the bar, which I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but it's kind of worth watching this film just for the piano player and just for the dance. I was going to say it's a highlight for sure, isn't it? Absolutely, it's a highlight, because it's just bonkers, you know, it's mad. And that's great, because these people are mad, and it just it gives you the tiny bit of light relief but underlines just how insane they all are. And that, that's that's a good thing. You know, you I think it's quite clever in that respect because you do need that light relief because up until that point, it's very atmospheric, it's very claustrophobic and you yeah. need something to kind of, I don't know, have a little bit of a breather. It's almost like an intermission, isn't it? And then it you get stuff. back to the, the grim stuff again and there is some grim stuff. I mean, one grim scene involving wood and nails, which I won't actually say more than that, but you can kind of imagine. I mean, it does actually reference... It's a part of the story, especially the closing moments. You'll see something. Mark Stevens is played by uh, Lauren Lucas. D- did you see Raw that came out in um, 2016? No, I didn't, but I want to Girl. see it now. You know, I measure how scary a film is sometimes by how early in the film and how much and with what veracity my husband jumps when the first jumpy thing happens, because invariably I just sit there, you know, as if you know, I knew it was coming. But there was a jump quite early in this film, and it was quite a high power one. And I was like, oh, okay, you're in for a good ride here. You know, I can't remember <laughs> it was. But I agree with you about the atmosphere in this one too. I mean, I think it's it's there's the the feeling of being trapped. You know, you you you, you do feel you know what the, what you know Mark um, is feeling in this film. You know, you feel trapped. You feel. You like you there's no escape from this you feel it's relentless and you know the, the the mood is really important you know it really supports that kind of um that narrative and yeah it's uh i mean apart from the sort of random cross-dressing and all that kind of stuff sorry we haven't even mentioned the cross i know yet. i was just coming on to that yeah because <laughs> i was going to mention psycho because this film reminded me of a lot of films it reminded me of psycho not so, so much Norman Bates' personality exactly, but that kind of reference thing with Norman's mother and memories of his mother and obviously Bartel's thinking that uh, Mark is his ex-wife, his wife who ran off. She was a singer as well. So obviously those comparisons with him being a singer, he gets him to sing at one point and obviously <laughs> believes that he is his wife that's run off or his ex-wife. So yeah. there's that, there's that kind of mental torment thing, which is quite uncomfortable to watch. It's uncomfortable from all angles, isn't it? Because you're, it, it's uncomfortable because you're watching somebody who's so deluded, they really believe this person in front of them is somebody completely different. And that's kind of sad to watch. That's kind of upsetting to watch. And then you, the impact that has on the person who's got, you know, suffering from mistaken identity, you know, is, is manifold as well. I mean, that, you know, he's, he's put through it because this other guy believes he, you know, he's, he's his ex-wife. Yeah, there's some chilling stuff in here. I mean, I will say it's not all violent all the way through. There's a couple of moments that will have you kind of grimacing. But I did expect it to be more extreme, to be honest, although I think the overall feel of it is quite extreme. It's more more a film about kind of atmosphere and that feeling of unease. But there is one scene towards the end, which is an aerial view shot, which much like what Gaspar Noé does, I mean, I think he did it in Irreversible as well, which obviously explains the same cinematographer that worked on this worked on irreversible so you know you've got that kind of again that feeling of unease and that hills have eyes feeling with the people in this it has that feeling and also texas chainsaw massacre to a certain extent as well yeah yeah absolutely and you're right it's it's got small references i think to quite a lot of things and i i quite like that in films like this to be honest i think it, it helps you know ground it and contextualize it and i quite like 
those little sort of references to to, to Psycho, Texas, Machenko, Massacre, those kind of things. I, I actually quite like that, you know, and it's, I think it worked quite well in here. I don't think it was entirely deliberate, but, you know, how difficult is it to do a completely original film these days? Of course exactly. Not, you know. Yeah. And like you say, it's, it's a film from 2004. It's getting reissued because it's coming back out on digital as well. So I'm glad that I've seen it because it is one of those films that you always see in lists. I think I'm quite hardened to stuff, though. I've seen so many nasty <laughs> horror films. <laughs> You've been around the block, you've seen everything. <laughs> Not that that's a you know, thing to be proud of. <laughs> There's a lot of rubbish out there. I'm going to go three. Um, and I'm going to go three because... It was a decent film, you know. I don't need to watch it again. Four is always a bit of a, you know, I like to watch it again kind of thing. And I, I feel, feel I've done my duty here by watching this, and I didn't hate it. I enjoyed it, but you know, I don't need to watch it again. So I'm going to go three. It's a pretty solid three for me. Yeah, and the same for me. I'm going for three. I very nearly gave it a four just because it, it's a film that I've remembered parts of as well. I've taken away a lot of stuff, and it's it's still there it's not like i've forgotten about it it's not a film that you know is so wishy-washy that is, that that hasn't had an impact on me it's definitely it's had a lasting impression i don't know whether that's a good thing though i know what you mean and, and there are things that i won't forget about it for sure yes. um not that they're like seared into my brain or anything but you know it, it is memorable it's not immemorable you know if, it, if, it, if I'd, I'd, I'd give two to a film that i just never think about again but this is definitely something that i, I have thought about since you know it, it hasn't given me nightmares but you know i've thought about it yeah so it's called Calvair, The Ordeal. It's uh, coming back out, like I say, on digital platforms on the 19th of September. Chris, always good to see you. Uh, I'm trying to think of what horror films we still haven't seen that we need to see. I'm sure They're you can think of a few. making horror films as long as we can keep reviewing them. So <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, be <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be there. We've got The Exorcist Believer to see in a few oh, weeks. Yes. I'm excited Cannot for that one. Wait. I know Can't it's going to be disappointing, but I don't care. <laughs> we we're gonna have a great time anyway whatever talk about looking on the bright side <laughs> absolutely we're gonna love it <laughs> thank you everyone for watching don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one see you later bye